usurp Brad's authority.
Good evening, everyone. I am Steve Tallheimer, the superintendent of Elkhart Community Schools, and I am here this evening with some members of my administrative team and with some school board members who I'll introduce in a moment uh, to share with you the plans that we've been having and the conversations we've been having for a repurposing of Hawthorne Elementary School. So before I get into the presentation and explain that a little bit more, um, I want to take a moment and introduce the people to my right. So here to my immediate right is Tony Gianese, who is our director of our, excuse me, our chief operating officer. And uh, Tony will speak for a few of the slides as we get into the presentation. To his right is Dr. Brad Shepard, our assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. To his right is Dr. Mindy Higginson, who is our director of elementary education. Next is Beth Williams, our director of federal programs, oversees many of our grants. And at the end of the table is Dr. S or is soon to be Dr. Sarita Stevens, uh, who is our assistant superintendent for student services. And join us, joining us this evening from our school board are school board members Rocky Enfield and Ann van der Wallen back in the back there. So the question that we want to first address is why are we looking at this at this particular time? And as we've looked at the enrollment trends within Elkhart Community Schools over the last several years, Elkhart Community Schools has been experiencing a drop in student enrollment. So that, combined with looking at our resources and the building resources that we have, we want to make sure that we're using those resources, both staff and human resources and our financial resources, to the best that we can. And one of the other difficulties that is really compounded into this year are our staffing challenges regarding the ability to have our buildings fully staffed with qualified teachers in all of our classrooms. So given all of those challenges and the things that we've been looking at over the past year in particular, um, as we've looked at those staffing challenges, we've looked at doing renovations to Hawthorne as a building, the proposal that I put forward is for Hawthorne Elementary to be repurposed so that the newer portions of the building could be utilized for preschool or pre-K and other parts of the building could be used as a community resource hub. So the overall proposal is that the students in grades kindergarten through six at Hawthorne Elementary would be relocated to other schools within proximity. The second piece is that we would relocate the pre-K programs, the preschool programs that are currently at Beck into the newer portions, the portions of Hawthorne that have been uh, constructed more recently that Tony will share in a moment. And then we would have the ability to expand our pre-K programming in that portion of the building um, as resources become available or we look at our overall preschool programming. The third piece would be to have a community hub of resources in the building that would be readily available to support families one of the primary pieces that we would put there would be a satellite office from Sarita's department in the building so that student services would have a satellite location in the neighborhood so that people could come there and register students or take care of things uh, through student services. The other piece is that we would look at potential other partners, perhaps a health clinic, mental health services, support services for families, particularly with kindergarten readiness in mind. And then the final piece of the proposal is that the suggestions that we're making for what to do with Hawthorne are really kind of a phase one or a beginning to overall looking within the district as to what needs to happen. Our immediate needs for staffing and, and what we've looked at immediately say to us that there's something that we can do at Hawthorne, but we really need to look more broadly at those trends regarding enrollment, what's happening with population, how many people are in the district? How many people might move into the district? We've all heard of the Amazon plant and what may be coming with that. So what might that cause to happen? So there are lots of things that we don't know and that we would need some expert help with. And so we would be doing a request for a firm, a company, to come in and help us look at certain things like population trends over the next 10 years. How are our buildings really being used? What's the standard that you use for that? How do you calculate that? Potential for further redistricting. How might there need to be consolidating or moving boundaries or other things happening? And then prior to my arrival, there had been discussions about doing something different with sixth grade, perhaps putting sixth grades into the middle schools 
or doing some things of combining middle schools or maybe even putting eighth graders in with the freshman division. So there are lots of these kind of ideas that are floating around out there and so we've never really done an analysis of that. COVID has prevented us from engaging in that work and so now as we're really looking at this and wanting to make the best decisions for the district, we need that expert assistance to help us look at those numbers and all of those different things. So let me first talk about one of the issues is the rationale and the costs and the facilities. So in looking at building renovations, it doesn't make sense to put the millions of dollars that would be necessary into Hawthorne to have it as a fully functioning K-6 building when we don't have the enrollment numbers to support that. Uh, in the fall, the school board had asked to look at renovations for Monger, Daly, and Roosevelt, or excuse me, Monger, Daly, and Hawthorne. And when we looked at those buildings and the work that would need to be done on them, we arrived at the fact that it, it really wasn't something that would make sense for us, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, the newer parts of the building can be used for pre-K and doing that would not utilize all of the building as we would as a full K-6 facility. At this time I'll hand it over to Tony so that he can talk to you a little bit about what has been done at Hawthorne um, and he'll share with you kind of the expansions and renovations that have happened on the building. Good evening. So as most people know by now, Hawthorne was built in 1929, and with a little research, uh, we discovered it was built for a whopping $160,000 back at the time in the day, which was a lot of money. So it was built in 29. With the expansion of the south side, it was realized that additional classrooms were needed. So you can see 1955, we actually added four classrooms. Well, we didn't. I didn't, certainly. Uh, but four classrooms were added. For those of you familiar with the school, they're the two classrooms, two, both on the second story, first and second story, on the cafeteria side of the school. And so, oh, here we go. Original school is in yellow here. And the 1955 edition is here in the green. And then after that, an addition of six classrooms was added in 1965, and that's this area here. And then in 1980, paint and cosmetics throughout the existing building, but a new addition to add the gym and the adjacent classrooms in this area. And then in 1994, need for additional classrooms was identified and the four kindergarten classrooms were added over here and then in 2004 additional need was identified for classrooms and cafeteria and that is the large expanse in blue that wraps around what is the south the east and south side of the building and then in 2015 we did paint carpet many cosmetic finishes, cosmetics and finishes in the 29, 55, and 65 areas of the building. In 2004, um, the 94 and 80 sections were also addressed with some new finishes. So that's how this transpired to get to the point where in 2004 we did that work and then 2015 we came back and did that work. And then in 2016 we installed new boilers in the building. So I'll just come back to the building here real quickly. So again, original building, 1929, um, very typical, strong school architecture at the time. In 55, they added on, keeping with the architecture, they add on the additional classrooms that were needed, because this is all it actually, the original building was two stories. This was constructed as two stories. And then in 65, the one story addition on the west, in 80, then 94, and then 2004. So many people have said, we have not done enough work at Hawthorne. We should have done more. So I was hired in 2006. I actually started when this building was under construction. 
And I always tell the story that my first day on the job, I realized we were already renovating a building that was under construction because we turned this into a K-2 primary center. So one of the first changes that happened was this became K-2, Hawthorne became 3-6 back in 2006. And I don't remember exactly how long that lasted. But at the time, this was, of course, the new building. Uh, previous to that, in 2002, we opened Beck. That was also a brand new building. But in terms of the overall construction of the district, before, uh, before, so back in 2015 with the referendum, we did small renovations to Pinewood, Woodland, and Beardsley. And those were to remove the offices from the interior of the building and move them out front. That was the, the safety and security was the reason for those projects. And of course, in, o, and of course, in 08, we finished a, a renovation in addition to Pinewood. In 07, a renovation in addition to Riverview. 06, this was opened. 02, Beck was opened. And then prior to that, the last major projects were in the mid-90s. 94, 95, 96 were Eastwood, Cleveland, and Feaser. 91 was Oslo. And then we go back into the 80s with the other elementary buildings. So we have actually done as much, if not more, work at Hawthorne as we did at other buildings. So that's something, you know, I can show you the chart. I can show you the information. It doesn't really do a whole lot of good. I, I know that. But I can tell you that I've, I've touched every project in this district for the last 16 years. So they're ingrained in me. I know what we've done. And we've always put as much heart and soul into Hawthorne as we have into any other building. And one of the other things to make people aware of is that when we moved to new funding for schools in 2010, that because of property tax caps, Elkhart Community Schools does not receive all of the property tax that it would be entitled to because of the percent cap on how much people pay on their property taxes. By that happening, the district has anywhere between 4 to 4.9 million on average lost out on revenue that used to come from property taxes but have been limited because of those property tax caps. Those property taxes are what pay for things like transportation, capital projects, which takes care of buildings, and also helps pay our debt. So when we're receiving that four to four and a half to $4.9 million less, that means that there is just less that we're able to do with that. And so when we're looking at the facilities that Tony's listed off and we're trying to determine where those dollars go, that means that we've simply been able to do less than maybe ideally we would like to. Our folks have done a terrific job of maintaining facilities and, and keeping them safe and comfortable for students, um, but sometimes when people are saying, well, why wasn't this done or why wasn't that done, those are the decisions that are driven also by that property tax cap issue. So when we're looking at all of this together, the choice that we have come to and that we're, we're sharing with all of you and we've shared with the, the board as part of this proposal is to keep Hawthorne as a K through six building, we would need to have a $5 million bond to do most of the things, almost everything that we would want to do in that building to help make it the caliber of K6 building that we would want it to be. So if we took out that $5 million bond, that's like a mortgage for us that we then would be paying off over the next 20 years. And the question is, what is that commitment to that building and the utilization of that building 20 years down the line when it is then over 100 years old? The other option is for us to put less than that in there, cap ourselves out and say that we'll spend no more than a million working on the newer portions of the building to relocate pre-K programs there. Because if we're moving students from Hawthorne to other neighboring schools, and Beck is one of those schools that has room, we can put the pre-K classrooms on the back portion of the building, take care of solidifying an entrance on the back portion of the building, doing the work that needs to be done in terms of paint and carpet and some other things that would need to happen, and then have those classrooms located there so that we can put our students into one of the newest buildings in the district. Also, Hawthorne students coming to this building would enable them to come to the newest elementary school in the district. 
which then leads to the next question of enrollment in space. So the students who would be moved from the district's oldest elementary would be moved to the newest buildings in the district and to Mary Daly and Monger, which are undergoing some improvements this coming year. And so here are the trends in enrollment. And when I presented this the other evening, I had not uh, updated the, a couple of the numbers in that first slide, so I, those have been corrected to truly represent where we are. And so when you look at back here in 2016-17, Beck was utilized as a K-6 building with some pre-K in it, and then it was reconfigured to become a pre-K center with fewer K through six students in it and hovers in that 240 student range for most of the time other than a little dip there. Daily, back in 2016-17, had 575 students in the building, and it is now at 425. Hawthorne was at 414, and then has been as high as 570, 546, and has settled in there around 510. And then Roosevelt, at one point, was up to 583 back in 1617, and is at 470. So as you can see, compared to where some buildings were back in here in terms of their capacity, we definitely have room in other buildings to be able to move those students. And another piece on this is that just district-wide, our trend in enrollment has dropped about 900 students over the past decade. And when those students are generating about $6,500 for us, it's $5.9 million less in revenue. So when we're having to make choices about where we're putting our resources and what we're doing, we're looking at age of a facility, we're looking at numbers in, in classrooms and enrollment, and we're looking overall at that budget. The third piece is that the newer portions of Hawthorne would be able to and have rooms that we can use to relocate pre-K there. Um, there are the two rooms at Hawthorne that are currently used for pre-K, the Title I classrooms there near the gym. We would be able to utilize the kindergarten classrooms, some other classrooms, and then because other classrooms are near enough to restrooms, we would be able to relocate those there. And then that would mean that those Hawthorne classrooms, the Beck Head Start classrooms, and Title I room would all be able to move there. And then the feasibility study, so the fourth piece that I mentioned back on the original list, a feasibility and demographic study helps us know district-wide what would be the next step. So again, it would help us look at what we need to know about job growth, housing. We know that the city is looking at, at developing housing and having some housing policy, so what would that mean? What changes are coming for the region and for Elkhart County and for within the school district that we need to look at our population and know what would be happening? The other piece is to have those experts look at us and from the outside be able to analyze the way that we're using buildings. It's not just myself and my team looking at that, but those other folks as well. And so the demographic piece would help us know what's happening regarding people and families and population. And the feasibility piece lets us look at what happens with our buildings. What happens if we move sixth graders to the middle school? What happens if we consolidate some buildings? What happens if we change some boundaries? So those are all things that this study would help us do. So the board and I are working on that study right now, determining what that's going to look like and making sure that we're asking smart questions to help us be able to plan what would be the next step of what would happen potentially to other schools, to where programs might be located, and what would be those next steps. So the timeline is, is that we're doing these presentations these first couple weeks of February. At the February 8th board meeting, we had talked about approving the feasibility study, but the board would like some more time to work on that, and so that will be something that we'll be, we will be working on over the next couple weeks. And then we're beginning some conversations with community partners to see who out there who has expressed interest in the past and maybe partnering with us in some way to now say, well, what would that look like? What could that be? Who might those partners be that would want to have a more permanent presence within a cluster of our schools to be able to assist students and families? And then through the months of February, as we continue through February and March, we look at those redistricting of those boundaries and what would happen. 
April, we would finalize those and settle staffing. And our goal would be is that by the time people would leave for the end of the summer, for the end of the school year for the summer, that everyone would know what those new boundaries are, where people would be staffed, where people would be going to school, so that there's no uncertainty going through the summer. One of the things that people have asked is, if, if you're doing this, then what, what is this going to do for savings? So as we look at this, um, we have currently a principal position open in the district that will be uh, appearing at the end of the month due to someone resigning and choosing to go into a different line of work. So when that happens, we would have a position, a position for a principal that would be attritioning or going off because it would no longer be needed. And then uh, the reduction of a secretary position and a part-time custodian in that building would all accumulate to about $203,000 in savings. The personnel that follow students would be the assistant principal position, the teachers, the nurse, the social workers, paraprofessionals, food service. Those would all follow where the students go. And then at the very least, Again, assuming the front portion of the building just sits there and doesn't have community partners maybe helping with utility costs or utilizing the building, at the very least, that front portion would, would sit there and we would sit very high heating points, or excuse me, very high cooling points, very low heating points. And in utility savings, we'd have about $20,000. And then again, by the building not being fully utilized, equipment and supply savings conservatively being about 9,000. So we're fairly comfortable in saying that those annual savings from those personnel and other costs would be around $230,000 that we then can turn around and utilize for paying staff, doing salary increases, and other things. So to boil it all down, the final couple slides here are just some, some making sure that people take away the important why and, and some final points. For us, the recommendation comes from the fact that investing millions of dollars in a building to use as a full K-12 school when we don't need the capacity because of our enrollment and where our numbers are, it, it just isn't justified. The second piece is if we're consolidating students into fewer buildings, that gives us greater flexibility with staff and allows us to be able to look at what we do in terms of best meeting the needs so that we have qualified teachers in classrooms and not substitutes, people not filling in and, and filling class sections for other teachers or writing lesson plans for substitutes. The goal is for us to really work on addressing that staffing issue. And it also allows that there are to be more classrooms within a building at a grade level for collaboration, for moving students around to meet student needs, to address behaviors, any of those issues. And the third thing is, is that we, in finding a repurposed use for Hawthorne, are not closing it and just letting it sit there and boarding up the windows, but we're allowing the history and tradition of Hawthorne to continue in that community just in a different way, by servicing preschool students and helping families on their educational journey. And some last things to keep in mind is all current staff members at Hawthorne who have a position with us currently will have one going forward. We will not be letting people go or people will not lose their jobs um, in this repurposing. The second piece is given the circumstances of staffing and the age of that building as, as 1929 as, as Tony said, if that building were located any place else in the district we would be having the same conversation. And the third one is this decision is purely driven by looking at our finances, looking at the staffing issue, and trying to come up with the best solution that helps address those things in a responsible and, and fiscally responsible way. And it is not a reflection on the Hawthorne staff. It has nothing to do with any of that or failing letter grades. I've had some people say to me, well, is it because of their status, you know, and their letter grade from the state? And it has nothing to do with any of that. So when we're looking at this, again, we're trying to be responsible from the fiscal standpoint and trying to be uh, attentive to what we need to do for staff and best utilize our resources given drops in enrollments and the challenges that we face there. So at this point, uh, those are the end of my comments and explaining the proposal that we've made. 
And at this point, I will open the floor to questions or comments. So if you uh, have a question or a comment that you'd like to make, you're welcome to come up to the microphone. If you would just tell your name and connection to the district or to the community and share that with us. And then um, I can answer questions. We'll take your comments. Um, and I'll be taking some notes as, as people come up as well. My name is Tim Myers. I'm a teacher here at Roosevelt. It's just a question I noticed or I didn't notice on the timeline. It said something about approving the second phase. I didn't see anything about an actual board vote on whether this was going to happen or not. So is it happening or is it still being discussed? It's discussed at the moment for us to kind of keep on the timeline of ensuring that we get everything settled by May. I would be suggesting that it needs to appear on a March agenda. Um, but that has not been finalized yet as we're listening and the board's processing what everybody's hearing. Uh, what, George Fridley. Um, what percentage of the students are going to be transitioning to new buildings or new facilities? How many students are going to be impacted in changes that this requires? So if we go back to this slide, the 510 students at Hawthorne would be the ones that would be reallocated to the other buildings. So they're going to be spread around to a lot of different schools. They won't be coming to Roosevelt, which is closer. Well, they'll be coming to Roosevelt and Beck predominantly because those are the buildings that have substantial room in them. But depending on where they're located and where some busing may happen or their proximity to, say, Daly's boundary or to Monger's boundary, they could be going there as well. Well, I'm trying to figure out where the students from Beck are coming from. What school or schools? I'm assuming they're coming from different, all different, from different schools that are kind of nearby. Right. I, the schools but are, we're, we're predominantly looking at the, at the Hawthorne students because they're the ones that we need to relocate in the other buildings. So, so you're really not going to make the schools the students most to to the most local school, but you're going to get most of the Hawthorne. So you'll be able to move the students and the teachers pro uh, probably to uh, Beck and kind of keep that group together. Yes. yes. And this, and when I looked at kind of the numbers, the sixth graders, how important is that to making everything fit? Moving six grades to the middle school would not be part of this consideration. That's a larger consideration for the whole district and the impact on middle schools. Okay. And that would be part of what we'd look at in the next, in the next phase. Okay. So some of these, yeah. When I when I look at the numbers, it makes it kind of you're filling up spaces that you hadn't had. Well, yeah. You're you're filling up the buildings pretty. You're maxima. You're. Yeah, you're utilizing the space in the buildings that you're using uh, at a pretty good level. More completely, yes. And Hawthorne, you, did you say that you're, they're going to need to put some new restrooms in for the preschool or pre, yeah, the? Uh, not did, immediately, no, we would not. Oh, okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Dreema Coleman. I um, am a born resident of Elkhart. I went to Hawthorne. My mother went to Hawthorne. My grandmother went to Hawthorne. I guess I need to understand, um, looking at those numbers, you're talking about maybe 100 children difference to repurpose this. But the building itself, is it not? structurally sound for the kids to stay there and the staff. I, I, I guess, and I told you this already, I, I, I have mixed emotions with all of this. I'm not seeing a good reason for the kids to move, for the staff to move, and for everybody to be uprooted to go somewhere else when you're bringing in pre-K and a community building or whatever, if the building is okay to do that, why is the building not okay 
to keep people rooted where they are? Well, in the, in the back portions of the building where the pre-K would be located, but for some of the work that would be needed up front, the community partners would be assuming the costs for doing that if we go that direction. So is the school system hurting for funds? Because I look at what used to be my old school, Memorial, and it's completely changed. I mean, we've got blue stuff all over the building and Central has blue stuff. That costs money. Why could that money not be utilized to help Hawthorne as opposed to destroying children and staff, sending them here and there? I just, I wasn't gonna say anything, but I just, I don't, I don't understand. I need to make you, make me understand like I'm too, because. So, so the discussions related to the facilities at the high school were all part of the high school merger plan that was set in motion and was completed just within the last couple years since my arrival. So that was all part of a strategic plan and the work that the board had determined uh, beginning in 2016, 15, 16 into 2017 was the plan that they wanted to follow for creating the schools of study and combining the high schools. Well, so th those funds done through bond issues and construction projects were all carried out during that time. So since, since I've arrived in the district three years ago, um, m those projects were just finishing up and we've merged the high schools. And so looking at our current state of where we are and taking care and maximizing the use of our facilities, this is where this recommendation is coming from. Yeah, I just, I, I, I don't see that any more than I, I saw the merging of the high schools either, but I, I, I guess I feel for the teachers. I feel for the students because something in my gut tells me this is already a done deal. And so probably come fall, we're gonna see kids and staff moving here and there. And to be uprooted, I remember being uprooted from after I left Hawthorne and went to Pierre Moran and then we all thought we were gonna go to one high school and they called half of us to Memorial and the other half to Central. And so our lives were just uprooted and then we became rivals and I, I'm not saying that. I'm sorry, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just not seeing any of this. Hello, I'm Michelle Troutman and I'm a teacher at Hawthorne Elementary School and I just have a few questions. Um, one of my questions is why a monger is not included in your enrollment trends chart, if they are one of the schools that um, our students could possibly just, attend. Just to, just to save some space on here, <laughs> but they, they do have some capacity, not a whole lot, not as much as other buildings, mm -hmm. but we would be looking at having some students go there as well. Okay, and then um, another question I have is about schools on the north side of town and if their schools and classrooms are, are full and if they're not, then is there a possibility for some of our students to be um, transported to schools on the other side of town? We, we have had that general conversation as part of the work that we're doing with the, with the principals and the working group. Our main challenge there is the, pers the drivers for transportation to be able to have enough drivers to be able to do that. So on the north side of town, is there, um, are there buildings that could, could so consolidate over there or kids move around there, on there the north side? There is capacity side? in many of our school buildings. Mm -hmm. And that's where the second phase and the second and the feasibility study comes in because when we're looking at the geographical distance between mm -hmm. schools in other parts of the mm -hmm. district and the impact that that would have and what that means for transportation and all those are, are questions where we need some experts to help us do that. The, the location of Hawthorne, the proximity to four other schools, make that something that we feel that we can do okay. ourselves and, and address mm -hmm. the capacity issue. But looking more broadly across the whole district is on mine and the board's agenda for the data that would come back from that study. Well, tomorrow there's a meeting at Mary Beck, which I plan to attend. Is there any way that you could share enrollment information about the other schools in our district? I can, 
I can share that with you. We can share that with you. Okay. Um, another question I have is about um, when you're taking the pre-K to the backside of Hawthorne, the B hallway, and then at our meeting last night at Hawthorne, you also said there was a possibility of the PACE program coming over there and other of, things. Mm -hmm. And so on your one slide where you said um, that people that would be um, moved to other buildings and you'd be saving money as far as like the um, cafeteria staff, the nurse, and so on. Are you not no, planning on having? Th those folks would stay there. They would We're, stay there? Well, because we would need some food okay. service people there. Okay, then I misunderstood yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And then another um, concern I have, um, I've kind of said this before, um, you know, I've been at Hawthorne a long time and I've been through all of the different changes where um, we went to a 3-6 building and then back to a K-6 building and we've, um, we've received many students from Mary Beck, over 100 students. And um, like Dr. Coleman um, said, um, our, our students deserve more. Um, we have a lot of students with a lot of needs. I love all of our students and I'm there because I want to, you know, help and provide for them. Um, but from my experience as a teacher for 29 years almost now, when we keep putting at-risk students together, we take one at-risk student or one at-risk school and combine it with another at-risk school that does not equal successful results. And if you look at Hawthorne and if you look at Roosevelt right now, I'm sure neither one of us are, you know, the cream of the crop. And that's how it was before when we, we put them together when Roosevelt was failing and they had to restructure, it didn't do a lot of good mixing us all together. You didn't see any fireworks happening. I mean, not that we didn't work hard, the kids didn't work hard. It's just a lot of needs to meet, and we're a lot of needs. And I, I don't understand how you're doing the South Side any favors which has happened year after year after year after year after year. The South Side is not being helped by Elkhart Community Schools. We're hearing that concern. We're working as a team to address those concerns in but, the planning. But your solution is to do the same thing. You but know, you're supposed to learn from history, learn from what's happened in the past, but I don't see that you are doing that. In our conversations, we're really trying to address those things and the resource question okay. and, and what's and, happening. And at our Hawthorne meeting yesterday, at our staff meeting, I asked, you know, for your Elkhart promise to the south side. What are your promises? What is going to happen for the students, for the community on the south side in writing? You know, we can say a lot of things, but what promises do you make to our community? Well, we're finalizing those right now, but our top goals are to get a certified teacher in every classroom to be able to teach students, get a stable staff that's going to be able to work with students for a prolonged period of time and develop a culture and take care of those kids within the building and know them by name, establish kindergarten readiness with a solid preschool program and preschool hub and availability for families, yes. and then the ability to provide services well. within that community that supports them. Correct me if I'm wrong, people that have been through the Roosevelt and Hawthorne merger, whatever it is, we had that before. We had good teachers in every classroom. We had pre-K program or, you know, whatever, and that is not a good enough promise. We need more. These students, the South Side needs more. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you.
Melissa Shane. I live in this neighborhood. My kids went to Roosevelt, they went to Beck. Um, I'm also the manager for community-based services for one of your community partners, which is the Bowen Center. Our, our main school that we started with was Hawthorne, so most of them I know from that. You know, I've been in their classrooms, I've met with these teachers. Um, my daughter had Miss Paulson when she was here, and my baby, she had Miss Jones when she was here. And I mean, I get what Michelle was saying. I don't think that the school district cares about this neighborhood, I never did. And so I, I get where you're coming from. I, I watched the meeting that you had Monday at Hawthorne. I understand the numbers. And I, I do think that you're trying to do the right thing where, where the money comes from. I don't feel like you understand the neighborhood. You know, and I know you tried really hard to listen to the parents, but I'm not sure that you can feel what they're feeling. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like people listen to the people in this neighborhood. I never felt like that. And I do feel like, hey, you know, whatever, move these kids around, you know. En enrollment's low. I know what they did at Beck, you know. They moved them around. Some of them came here. Some of them went to Hawthorne. And now we're, we're going to send them back. You know, I hope it works. I hope it works, you know. Um, and, and if I could just interject here for a moment, one of the things that I keep saying in every meeting that we have is my goal is for us to get this repurposing and this redistribution of students settled and done and we stop experimenting and we stop doing everything and we get it to the point where we just let people teach and do their work. And so I know that there have been lots of things that have done, but my commitment in being here is let's get it, get it situated, get it staffed, get people working together in teams and stabilized so that we can do that. I brought this up at my meeting today with, with my staff, and I asked, like, do you want me to, to bring anything to the meeting? What do you want? And their main concern was the teachers. I, I heard what you said, you know, with the incentives and everything, but I've seen things promised before. You know, I heard everything when we were talking about the merger, you know, and I'm like, yeah, in theory, it sounds like a great idea. I have two kids at the high school. That is the biggest mess that I have ever seen in my life. I don't want them to go there anymore. I have somebody graduating, but I also have a 10th grader. And I've, I've never turned my back on the school district because I appreciate the diversity that we have that no other school district in Elkhart has. But that's, the school is a mess. Every time you drive past, there's kids just walking off, nobody goes to class, there's no teachers, everybody's a sub. That was a big promise to us. This is going to be great, and it's not. So, I mean, forgive me, but how can I believe that this is going to be a success when I know what a huge failure the last great idea was? Okay. I think that's all. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Jen Soya. Um, I went to the board meeting yesterday, so a lot of you guys have familiar faces, um, but those that do not know me, I was a student at Hawthorne for um, seven wonderful years. Um, first off, I just want to say that I'm so sorry to the teachers that we failed you as a community, that we cannot provide the funding to continue on doing what you guys have done through these wonderful years. I'm so sorry. Now, to continue, I did write something, otherwise my brain will go squirrel. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, like many that are here today, I am here to talk about why I'm against the school closing. I feel sad, angry, <coughs> frustrated, confused, and anxious about the future. The reason I feel these emotions is because I graduated from Hawthorne Elementary. I see such familiar faces. These were actually some of my teachers when I attended Hawthorne. Um, those were the best years of my childhood. You see, like many students that attended or are attending currently, I came from a low-income household. Unfortunately, my parents struggled, but they always encouraged me to go to school and further my education. I remember my first years there, excited to be in a new place, making new friends, and most importantly, learning. I was always welcomed with a positive attitude from the staff and never once did I feel like I did not belong. 
Regardless of what was going on at home, I can always count on having a great day at school. I would do my personal best at whatever I set my mind to because that's what our principal, Mr. K, would say every morning over the PA system. And we are the pride of the South Side. The teachers that I have worked with worked very hard around the clock to help us succeed. I remember the school that was originally like, uh, how it was originally like, and over the years, how it had been stayed up to date, adding a new additional wing, expanding the cafeteria, and making a bigger library. Those things might be silly to you guys, but it was something amazing. We had a little tiny library, and I remember once we got it replaced, it was the most amazing thing ever because you had books and books and books and shelves, and I even have a daughter that's a book reader as well. She's so excited to go to the library, and it just makes me happy. Um, even adding the additional wings. Um, providing extracurricular activities was also another way that I had many other ways of escaping whatever's going on at home. You see, Hawthorne is not just an old school to me. It's the place that shaped and molded me into the person that I am today. I graduated there, went to Central High, and furthered my education. Had a family, settled down in Elkhart County because I believed in the power of the community. Please don't take that away. Believe it or not, a lot of friendships that I have made in Hawthorne I still have to this day. When I told them about the news of Hawthorne is at risk of closing its doors, they expressed the exact same emotions that I am feeling. Now let's cut to the chase. My biggest fear of closing this school down is what's going to happen to this community. Again, like me, a lot of the students are from low-income families. This is not a solid solution of moving them to another school. They will face increased class sizes, transportation issues, and on top of that, what we already have, low attendance. If students cannot get to school, all the things that you know you might fix will continue to be a problem, just in any other school. I know this, this is firsthand due to the whole Roosevelt school that was built and when the classes were divided K to third and I believe the rest goes to Hawthorne. We tried this and look where it got us. On top of that, where's the money going? I know that Mr. K was always hands on on what improvements needed to be done and how it was being managed. Please explain to me what has happened since I graduated from Hawthorne. I think closing the school down would not be the best interest in the students or this community. We must find another solution and bring out ideas on what we can do. Please do not look at this issue lightly and think that the proposal that was stated would be the way, best way to go. Please look at previous examples of what when schools close due to staff, the students, and to the communities. I personally, and like many others, are against this proposal. Now, and always, we are the pride of the South Side. Let's make that our priority again. Now, a big thing too, um, the past couple days I've been going online, pulling up statistics, reading articles like a crazy person, trying to see what these cool closings look like in different communities. I mean, Michigan closed 206, Philadelphia closed theirs, New York experienced the same thing, Across the country, there's low staffing regardless due to the whole pandemic. I, I get that. I do get that. But the thing is, is um, I went on and I started reading, and it says, what happens to Philly when they close 30 schools? They close 10%, 10% of their schools between the years of 2012 and 2013. Many people worried about the students and their um, displaced. The displaced students had more absences due to the fact that they could not get to those schools. Currently, you do know that we do have those transportation issues. Do you see that that would get any better in the future? Can you guarantee me that the transportation issue will be resolved for these kids that will be displaced? Secondly, um, the further the students had to travel to reach the new schools, the more they struggled in that area. 
Um, the displaced students performed poorly on standardized testing, and their numerous peers at the receiving schools also suffered, or suffered academically. This seems to hurt all involved, not just the staff, not just the students, but parents as well. It's not fair to them. Schools needed more support and more help trying to rebuild school culture. And that is what you will be losing if you close down Hawthorne. The biggest thing that I read in that article is that the reality of school clo closures was much more complex than policymakers anticipated. Are you ready for that? I know that you guys are promising things and it's very frustrating from a standpoint of a taxpayer. Before the whole referendum thing, before all of this was happening, I have not once seen any improvements on Hawthorne. So there financially, that's been going downhill since then. Has anything been done financially to keep it going? No. So now we're looking at a $5 million bond when literally if you guys just kept up to date with the school, it probably would only be a million that would be needed. I don't understand why there's a $5 million bond. What improvements need to be done to that school? I mean, have you seen the old Roosevelt before they closed it down? The roof was collapsing, sewage was backed up, and they took their sweet time closing it. I don't see that at Hawthorne. I don't, I, and, and that's what I'm like trying to wrap my head around, and, and it's just so confusing to me because Hawthorne, the teachers take their time cleaning their rooms, making it look presentable, making it as a nice area for these students coming because they don't have that at home. And to be quite honest, I feel terrible for the students. I really do. Especially a lot of those students, they come from Hispanic culturals, they come from black neighborhoods, and believe it or not, they're not gonna get treated equally in these areas that you guys plan on taking them. On one of the, the articles that I read too, kids felt out of touch, out of reach, that they were being stereotyped because of wh where they were coming from. A lot of them felt stupid, a lot of them felt per poor, and a lot of them felt like they did not belong in that school. Because again, you will be losing that cultural that we already spent so many years building in the South Side. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments?
you, Sarita. Gary Community School Corporation, where we closed five schools because we saw um, the, first of all, the way that funding uh, was cut for secondary and elementary. Uh, and that was over a course of about 10 years. And then with uh, the disappearing of the DeGoster, where school districts could claim student count for three years, I believe, after um, the student was gone, all of that is gone. The circuit breaker with the tax uh, rate, all of that is gone. And so you have these raw figures that is significantly less than what, what school districts were used to operating with. And so here's what we have as a community school. Because I know that it's hard when you close a school because you have a love for it and there's a nostalgia there that we can't do without this. But we also have to look at the fact that this budget is a whole school district. It is not for one school. We are not isolated as one school and as teachers. I was a teacher for 12 years, a principal for, for five. So I've gone through the ranks and I've been there. So I know what it means to actually consolidate the talent so the kids can get the best education we can offer. And here's how that happens. In communities of low income, and I came from one in Gary, there needs to be other things that de develops the, the, the student as a person. And those other things are on, if you're, you're familiar, we're teachers, we're educators, right? So you're familiar with Maslow. So you know there are things that need to happen before somebody feels secure enough to learn. They need to feel secure in their homes. They need to feel that they are loved and a part of a group. And then at the fourth level, you get to need to know. Okay, so if we can put our heads together and see what we can do for our children, it would include us creating a community center that hap that's happening all over the country it, it, it's really a best practice trend. And what happens, and, and I know that's hard to think of because we don't want it to be our school. I get, I get that, I understand that. Uh, but I have seen and have actually witnessed in Elkhart community groups coming together saying, what can we do? How can we help? How can I make my services accessible to Latinx families, to black families, to low income families? that's struggling because they don't have access. You're right, it is our responsibility to make sure that we get the children to school. And I work with Dr. T, with Tony G, with Brad, with Mindy, and I'm sorry that I'm switching up names, with Beth, and we think every day, what is the best option of getting our kids where they need to be? So this wasn't just a haphazard decision. It really is based on the fact that we have a group of very talented people, but we're, we're, we're not coordinated. And so there are populations falling through the cracks, even as we are right now. There are still things falling through the cracks. I know we're good. We're good at what we do. But we have to coordinate it better where you don't have a class of 35. You don't have a class of 30. You don't have a class of, and when we know that we can consolidate and we can create classes of 20, three segments of 20, we could do that if we coordinate the talent. And if we coordinate the scale, it really is not about holding on to brick and mortar. It's about organizing the talent. And we do the whole child by creating the social services for the child and the academic services for the child. And I know you're emotional, and I, I, there is space for that. I have worked at schools like yours for 25 years. 
They're no different in other urban areas. Elkhart is, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the upside of Elkhart. Are you, okay, are you familiar with Roosevelt High School? Roosevelt High School revolutionized. Okay, so. Okay. Thank you, and I respect your comments. I thank, I respect you for that. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, I respect your comments. I was really just trying to explain about the social services, okay, and what that means for bringing community social services in one place and making that accessible for the population that needs it the most. I feel like what we have failed, um, and the failure was the referendum that we weren't able to support our schools. And the fact is, is that the school board, the whole system, we need to be teaching our kids to be involved in society and, and, and working as a social network so that we vote and we are actively part of our community. And the, I, I you know, and, and I feel that the referendum, referendum would be different if people really felt, really got what they needed from the, their education in the way of social skills. So when we, when I, when I see school boards struggling with, with issues about how to control concepts, we need to be working on how to be inclusive, how to be engaging, and to ha have the people here that have been students, they've grown up, they're now voters, to be able to have a school system that draws us into being, there's somebody who has, has not been, the referendum could have gotten a lot more, I think, if we would have had the encouragement from the experiences in our lives in school. Thank you. I'm back. I spoke the other day, but just with her speaking right now, it just made me think about something. My daughter's at middle school now. She went to Hawthorne K-6. to When she was in kindergarten, she was in high abilities, and she was offered to go to Pinewood into Oslo. I was offered several times. They would want to bust my other children. They wanted to remove her. I elected not to keep her there. I elected to keep her at Hawthorne because Hawthorne was her home. Hawthorne would provide for her. Her teacher would provide for her. And more importantly, I was a student that was supposed to go to Hawthorne, and I didn't get to go to Hawthorne when I was sent to a different school when I was younger. And I suffered because of that. It was hard for me. It was hard for me to be in my neighborhood, but not to be in the school that I went to. You no, know, when I went to school, I lived in my neighborhood. It was a very difficult transition as a child, and I didn't want to put my daughter through that. And the commitment and the way and the love that she had at Hawthorne was so amazing. I didn't want to tear her from that. And Hawthorne was able to give that to her. They were able to do her high abilities homework on a separate level. They put all the high abilities kids together at a table with her group. She had to do the same four or five kids, all the way from K to six. And I know those children's names because she talked about them constantly. And so when they talk about the different academics and different things, but you guys don't really think about the brain drain y'all take from Hawthorne, because oftentimes, like me as a parent, they're constantly asking you, 
take your child out, put them in Pinewood. Take your child out, put them in Oslo. So some of these numbers too that reflect maybe the failure of the school is because you're creating this brain drain by taking those high ability students and taking them out and you're like willing to bust it because that's not a lie. When my daughter was younger, I got offered several times to take her to the other school and they were willing to pick her up individually and bust her to Oslo just so they could have the high ability student over there to Oslo. But I chose Hawthorne by choice because Hawthorne is where her home was. And when I had an opportunity this year in the fall to be a reading mentor, the first thing I got on my phone was like, Miss Kenge, can I come to your class and be a reading mentor? And I went to that classroom every Wednesday and I read to those kids and I got to meet those children and I bought them little piggy banks from the banking center and I got to meet them and be a part of them and experience that. And that right there, when they're talking about, when everyone here is talking about how Hawthorne is and the amazing things they do, that community, that home, I'm sorry, they're not gonna get that elsewhere. They just aren't. You know, you can say whatever you wanna say about it, but that feeling that the kids have, that my, my younger kids came to Hawthorne and they already knew the teachers and Miss Koje and Miss Kendig and Miss Miller, all these people, Miss Thad, all the people that do so much for these kids that they know as soon as they got there, my sons felt welcome. And it doesn't always transition easily. When they were preschool, it was hard to get from one teacher to the next from third to four years old. It was a hard transition. But Hawthorne was easy and smooth. So they walked in, they felt welcome. And that's really what I think people are trying to get across. No one thinks that you're trying to do this for some type of partially financial gain, but the biggest thing you're just trying to get you to understand is that love, that commitment, that community, it's not, they're not gonna have it if they go somewhere else. They're just, they just are not. It's not gonna happen. So like, just at least think about those things. And, and the comparison to other school districts, and as like Ms. Chow said earlier, no one really cares what happened to other districts. We're talking about what's happening in Elkhart and what's happening here. And it's just unfair to these kids. Like my daughter, when she graduates from high school, will not be able to go to her old elementary school and do her high school walkthrough, right? Because now you've taken away that building, you've taken away that school. That is the first thing she mentioned to me. She came home and she said, Mom, I realize I won't be able to walk through the elementary school and see my old teachers and see my old classrooms when I graduate because they're taking that away from me. That's what you're taking away from these kids. So that's all I wanted to say, but just think about the home and the family and what you're ripping away from these children that they may not recover from and be able to speak up to the next teacher and reach out to them and talk to them and when they need guidance, they can get it because they might not get it elsewhere. Or when she goes to the other school, like someone mentioned earlier, they might end up in daily or end up at a different school system or Munger and those kids might say, oh no, you're from Hawthorne and bully them. Those things happen, we act like they don't, but they do. So it's just really important to understand that like for you to understand that the type of family and the type of commitment, the type of bonds, because that is, they're not gonna get anywhere else. And I just, I just don't understand. We just keep having these meetings and I've watched all of the ones read virtually these ones. And that is what I just think is not coming across the table is you're not understanding the love and commitment of these teachers and these students and that bond that they have. And, and my very last comment on it's not a reflection of the Hawthorne staff means that I understand that. The other piece that I would add is that in all of our conversations with the principals who are involved in determining where students would be placed, every one of them has said, we will welcome those students. They are all Elkhart Community School students. They have made commitments to say, it's not gonna be about those Hawthorne kids coming or those kids coming or going. It is every kid is an Elkhart Community Schools kid who's now coming to my school. So, you know, we can't control if a kid says something to another kid, but we can address it. We can build a culture of these very caring teachers coming into that building and helping add to that and build upon that commitment that all of those other building principals have made. I know that it, that it is taking this apart, and I, I don't take that lightly. We, none of us do. But everybody in the conversations from the very beginning have been committed to doing that, and I know that that's in their heart as we've had those conversations and are determining best placement for students. So we are hearing that. We are hearing it. Thank you. Hi, Jen Soya again, sorry. Um, I was very interested on what George said, the gentleman in the second row. Um, regarding the referendum, and I totally understand that it did not pass, and that's unfortunate. But the biggest thing is that I keep hearing that the property taxes, property taxes, well, and what I've noticed on my property taxes is that my assessed value keeps going up, and I'm paying more in taxes now than ever. So using taxes as an excuse isn't something valid to me, 
since I see that constant increase in my property taxes. Um, another thing is that you're asking this community to trust you guys, trust that you guys are making the right decision. And it's really hard on that when time and time again, we've been screwed. We have financially, support from administrative staff, we, we have not seen that. So that's another comment that I just wanted to add on that. Um, you guys are asking us to trust us, or to trust you guys, but again, due to mismanagement of funds, lack of funds, it's hard to do that when we haven't seen anything in return from you guys. That's just all I wanted to add. Thank you. And all, all I can say in response to that is in the time that I've been in the district, we have not mismanaged funds. We've been constrained by... I understand. I'm sorry. And I know that you're well, only I, here I just have to years. defend myself yeah. and my team because yeah. in the time that we've been here, I, I have not done anything malfeasant with money. Correct. And we've really tried to manage within that dropping enrollment. Correct. We've cut administrators. We've done the things that are needed to do. Yes. To try and, to and, and those are baby steps compared to how in the past years... And there I can only control been. and affect what's happening right now and that is while correct. I'm responsible. Yes, yes. But th that's the whole thing. With the whole trust, it's just hard to give when it was never given to us in the first place. Okay. So just trying to build those relationships and trying to do this, I don't think it's going to give you the most trust out of the community. It has to be earned. Thank you. I can. Would you please? I have to explain to my seven-year-old why she might not be going there again next year as a dear granddaughter friend. And there's nothing more heartbreaking to a parent to not be able to help a child because there's nothing to do. But I think maybe perhaps it would be advantageous to talk to you. Hi, I'm Joanne Paulson, and I think, uh, for those of you who don't know, Hawthorne staff, we just found out a few weeks ago, um, and everything's very raw for us, and I don't think it's going to get any better soon. We had no idea that this was happening, that this was even going to happen. And I'm begging the board, the school board, can we pump the brakes, slow our roll here? Can we? Our building is not collapsing. As Jennifer said, we're, it's, it, yes, we have to have some improvements. I get that. But I'm just asking for more time. I think we need to start thinking outside the box. I think we need to, I want to exhaust for our community, for our students, for our staff, I want to exhaust every possibility before we move forward. We don't have a single specific plan yet. Every time the staff has asked questions, it's like, well, we're working on that. We don't know. This is, this is February, and May 27th is our last day of school. A lot of things have to be worked out before then. A lot. And I'm sure, I know you all are working hard. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm really not. I'm, I'm just begging. I'm begging for time. I'm begging for time for us to, as a community to come together. We were brainstorming yesterday with Dr. Tallheimer and Kate. I think we had some really cool ideas happening. And I appreciate the board members who were there also to be with us. And Dr. Tallheimer has, you know, come and talked to us a couple times, but we, I want to, we just need more time to work this out. Why is it so, it's just so fast. It's next year and, our, and we're reeling. Please, please give us more time. My name is Keith Kingsley. I live a block from here and have lived here since 1969. My children went to Roosevelt uh, School, my three. Uh, the old Roosevelt, of course. 
Um, the thing that I want to note is this sense of ownership that I'm feeling here. And I wasn't at the meeting last night, or on Monday night, but I got the same uh, report on that. And that is the sense of ownership of the school by the community. And it seems like that's a precious thing and something that, um, that really should be um, really should be affirmed and somehow responded to. I'm involved somewhat in the um, We Thrive effort of the city, uh, and which is focused on South Central Elkhart. I'm wondering if, has, has there been any connection, have, have, have the uh, Elkhart Community Schools administrators, other, I, I, th I think there are some teachers who are involved in that but has there been any communication between uh, folks in administration and this We Thrive initiative? Yes, there I've had conversations been. with a couple people about it and seen some of the preliminary yeah. information from it. Because one of the prime concerns of We Thrive is community ownership and 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 when you already have community ownership, I mean, in, in that case, it's, it's a matter of trying to gain that, uh, the ownership of, of a wide uh, group of people from South Central Elkhart. Not just, uh, and, and it's not just ownership of what is, but helping to plan what will be, to create what's called a roadmap for the future of South Central Elkhart. Mm -hmm. And it, the schools are part of that. In both cases, uh, the We Thrive effort is actually for the whole city, but right now it's focused on South Central Elkhart. Mm -hmm. In your case, you're responsible for the schools of the whole city, and yet here's one school, Hawthorne. Uh, really, I mean, I hardly distinguish between Hawthorne and Roosevelt, partly because uh, where I live, there were kids going to Hawthorne and to Roosevelt in, in just within a few blocks of each other. So I see these as schools that belong to this particular community. And um, when there is this kind of, um, this kind of, of um, you know, emotional connection with one of the institutions of our community, it's something that we, I think we really have to take seriously, uh, because it's what makes a school, I think, thrive. <laughs> and so in the, uh, the pleas for more time, I suppose, is kind of what I would like to uh, advocate. Um, and a lot of the motivation here is, uh, and for this particular proposal, is financial. And I, I mean, I realize that that's kind of the basis of, uh, you know, how, we, how, how you have to operate. But I also think that um, somehow we need to look beyond that and, and take seriously the, um, the feelings of, uh, of um, and the history and the traditions and somehow preserve that. Thank Thanks. You. With that, we will go ahead and close for the evening. If you have a question, oh, I'm sorry. My name is Chris Beyer. I teach here at Roosevelt for the last eight years. And I agree with a lot of what's been said. This, there's something about this that just doesn't feel right. Um, Hawthorne is a beautiful culture and a beautiful school with amazing teachers. Roosevelt is a beautiful culture with amazing teachers and wonderful students. And as this year has gone by, now that, I mean, we were surprised too when this was told to us. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I can only imagine what you guys have gone through. But before you make a decision like this, and this is a, a very huge decision, because you're going to be taking a culture away from what your chart showed, the largest of the buildings on your chart. 
511 students. That was a bigger school than any of the other schools listed there. And before you do that, you need to walk these halls of Hawthorne and Roosevelt. We're walking distance apart. You, you can do whatever. Sub in our classrooms. Get to know some of our teachers. Do you know the names of all these people sitting here? Do you know the names of these amazing people sitting here? Do you know them? Have you talked to their students of both schools? Because this is going to impact both of our schools in a very amazing way. And I know Dee has worked extremely hard to build a, a really nice family atmosphere here at Roosevelt. And of course we would welcome the students and teachers of Hawthorne, but is it necessary? Can't we still be neighbors? You know, can't, can't, we, we, we're, can't we be neighbors? But why, why does this have to happen? I understand money, 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 yeah. I am a taxpayer. I pay, I live in Elkhart's district. I'm a graduate of Elkhart Memorial. Um, I went K-12 to Elkhart schools. Um, I chose to live in this district because I believe in Elkhart schools. And I, my children attend Elkhart schools because I believe in Elkhart schools. But I'm genuinely concerned. Before you disrupt the cultures of the South Side, get to know the South Side. Know the students' names. Because, yeah, they say, oh, well, they, they come from troubled backgrounds and troubled homes. But there are beautiful cultures on the south side of Elkhart. And the eight years that I've been here, I've gotten to know adults, parents, students that really have enriched my life and taught me things that I never would have known if I didn't teach on the south side, because I'm from the north side. And I would have never met these amazing teachers that I am in awe of. Some of these teachers I've worked with. And before you make a decision this huge, you need to do more than walk our halls. I haven't seen an administrator this year walk the halls of Roosevelt. And um, I, I, you need to get to know us. You need to do more than walk the halls. You need to be in our classrooms. You need to talk to us. You need to know our names. Because these are the people that you're deciding the future of us and them and neighbors, happy neighbors, we love, but <laughs> you're deciding our future. So before you do make this decision, get to know us and know what this impact is truly going to do to us. Okay, and hopefully, hopefully you will. Thanks, Chris. My name is Lois Hart. Uh, my children and my grandchildren never went to Elkhart schools. We live in Elkhart, but they all, well, they went to St. Vincent's. But this year, for some reason, I just had to have my grandchildren move to the Elkhart schools. They moved to Hawthorne. And now they have to be uprooted again somewhere else, okay? But that's all right. But what I wanted to know, you're planning on redistricting this area if the school closed, right? Do the parents have any say in which schools their children will be going to? So we would have boundaries to yes. where people would go, and then if there were space available, then we would allow transfers if there were space available, as we do within the district. But only if there was space only available. Only if there was space available, right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Yahaira Jaimez. I am a teacher at Hawthorne Elementary School, but I was also a student at Hawthorne Elementary School. I have my fourth grade teacher right there and my third grade teacher right there. But most importantly, I'm also a parent there right now. I don't live in the Hawthorne district, but I chose to bring my son to Hawthorne because I trust those teachers there. But what I just heard right now and what I heard at the meeting on Monday is I am not sure what school my son is going to go to next year. And as a parent, I don't really have the option of transferring him to another school unless there's space for him available. So I know I'm not the only parent that is starting to think about making changes next year. 
because I don't like the possibility of my son having to go to the district that I currently live in. So right now, I'm sure I'm not the only parent that's already looking for different options for next year. I was a student at Hawthorne, so I know a lot of people in this community. And I hear a lot of people talking about how next year their kids are not going to be in Elkhart Community Schools anymore. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, Hawthorne has a lot of um, walkers and bus riders, but most parents choose to pick up their kids after school. We have a, over 150 car riders every day. So what that's showing me is that there are 150 families that are willing to drive to pick up their kids every single day and wait in the parking lot for 20 and 30 minutes. Concord West Side is only, no, Concord, yeah, Concord West Side is four minutes away. Concord South Side is eight minutes away. Concord East Side is 10 minutes away. So if parents are not feeling like they have any decisions in this or are not being acknowledged, there are gonna be lots of par parents and families that are going to move their kids out of the district. So I just wanted you to be aware of that as you guys continue to think about this because I am just one parent, but I have heard many parents thinking about that. So I just wanted you guys to take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, we will close for the evening. I want to thank everyone for coming, for your questions, for your comments. Uh, I and the team will be here if you have a question or something that you would like to come and share with us that you didn't want to share in front of the group. Um, and we thank you for your time and your interest in the education of the children in Elkhart. Have a nice evening.